Hey, my name is Nick and in today's video I have a giant TCR frame and fork and I'm going to be building this bike and putting it together for you. This video might be pretty long so go ahead check on the bottom for timestamps if you want to skip to a certain section and look below also in the description and comment section for the timestamps if you want to find them there. So let's go ahead and go over the components. I have this giant medium TCR aluminum frame and it comes with a giant composite fork with aluminum steer tube. Already installed in the frame is the bottom bracket. It's a press fit bottom bracket made by Shimano. I have parts of the headset here along with the seat collar, the top of the headset that goes up here, and then the top cap that attaches over the stem. Starting with the front of the bike, we have the handlebar, and then the stem, the associated bolts connected to the handlebar. Next, we have the STI Shimano Tiagra shifters. These are the 4600 series. I'll be using these. You could tell the difference between the 4600 and the 4700 because the 4700 doesn't have the cables coming out here. The cables are integrated into the brake shifter levers. Also here is some um, new bar tape. And typically they come with end caps, but the end caps are already installed in the handlebar. So I'll leave them inside as well. Connecting the shifters to the handlebar to the frame. I've got some housing and you need two shifter cables, two brake cables, and associated connected housing along with it. Moving further back, we've got a seat post, a seat, and a reflector attached to it. This seat post is a 30.9, but this build will work for a 27.2 seat post with a shim or an adapter if you do go with a 27.2 millimeter round seat post. Moving down from the seat post, we have the crank set. It's a Tiagra 3450 compact crank set with 172.5 millimeters length crank arms. However, if you want a 165, 170, or 172.5 or 175, that can work as well. The pedals here are just standard flat platform pedals, nothing special. Maybe hard to see from this angle, but I do have the front derailleur over here. It's just a standard Tiagra front derailleur. If you take a look at the frame here, there is a brazon derailleur mount, so it's not a clamp, it's a brazon. So make sure you get a brazon front derailleur for the build. Here's a closer look at the front derailleur and notice that the connection here is just by a bolt here and there's no clamp built on. Here's an example of a clamp-on front derailleur. This is either 28.6 or 31.8 millimeter and you can tell looking at the Tiagra it's very different how it mounts to the bicycle. So choosing a front derailleur make sure you get the right one for your build because if you buy a clamp-on and you have a frame like the one I'm using there's no way it's going to work. However if you do buy a brazon you can always get an adapter. So here's a quick look at a Shimano brazon adapter. I have two rear derailleurs and I'm going to probably try to see if the LX1 will work. It's a 9 speed and I have a 10 speed system. So for the Tiagra 4600 should accommodate a 9 speed rear derailleur. However, the Tiagra 4700, which is black color, has a different pull ratio and may not accommodate this rear derailleur. This Tiagra that came with the build is a SS for short cage and only accommodates up to 28 teeth rear cassettes and I do like lower cassettes gearing in the rear or larger cassettes for lower gearing. So that's why I'm going to use this 9-speed LX to see if it's compatible with the 10-speed Tiagra shifting. Okay moving on I've got two bottle cages and towards the rear of the bike we also have the cassette which works with the rear derailleur and a 10-speed chain. You could use an 11-speed chain if you'd like to but I just have a 10-speed chain there. The brakes with this build are just the Tecro. I think they're the 240s, nothing special, nothing fancy. As you can tell from the brakes, the front is a lot longer here, the mount, than the rear because it has to pass through the fork. So you have a front and a rear brakes. There's also some other small things like a barrel adjuster for the rear derailleur. And now the wheels. Can't forget about the wheels. These are 100 millimeter in the front, 130 millimeter width in the rear. The 100 millimeters I mentioned is from here, 
to here, and that's the axle width. And these are, I think, five millimeter quick release skewers. The 130 millimeters is from here, the end of there, over to right there where the dropouts are. The free hub here is a Shimano. There are many different types of free hubs. And this is the standard HG Shimano free hub. The tire and tube are already installed. However, if you have rims that are deeper than, let's say 25 millimeters, you may need longer press the valve tubes. So these tubes might only be 40 millimeters and this rim is 35 millimeters deep. So ideally you probably want 50 millimeters or longer press the valve lengths. So here's a look at 60 millimeter valve stems on the same rims. Now the fun part, I get to start weighing everything and then after that I will start to put the whole bicycle together. The frame, the bottom bracket, and a few, and the front on brazons, 1.4 kilograms, which is 3.13 pounds. There's another look at it on the scale. I just had the shoestring holding it up there. The fork comes in at 466 grams. Okay, the lower of the headset, 27 grams. The upper of the headset brings it up to 53. Then the top cap brings it to 71. And then we're going to add the spacers here. And then finally, the top portion. It's about 100 grams just for the additional headset parts. The seat clamp here is 32 grams. And notice that this seat clamp is double sided. So there's actually two 4 millimeter bolts holding it on. This handlebar is 326 grams. Lightweight carbon handlebars are under 200 grams. The 100 millimeter stem here comes at 169 grams. Light stems are closer to 100 grams. Next, let's start with the right, sorry, the left, which is the front Tiagra shifter, 246 grams. And add the right side in, and that comes in at 496 grams. Start with the front tech row brake, and that's 191 grams, and we'll add the rear to that, and it comes out to be 373 grams. The front brace on derailleur is 86 grams. The rear derailleur, I've got two options, a short cage if I want to use up to a large tooth of 28 tooth. However, with a long cage, you could accommodate up to a 34 or maybe larger, and that's 305 grams. The right side of the crank is 565 grams, and then when I go ahead and add the rear one, with the left side is 809 grams. In case you're wondering, the lightweight Dura-Ace is a little over 600 grams. The cassette is an 1130 or 1230, and that's 345 grams. Okay, it's a 1230. And the pedals, user preference, but the platforms are 307 grams. Seat and seat posts are 750 grams with the reflector here also. And this is 30.9, not 27.2, so it adds a little extra weight. And lightweight seat posts typically are under 200 grams and seats under 200, so you could get this combo for most likely under 400 grams. So this one's quite a bit heavier, almost twice as heavy as a lightweight setup. Kind of necessary, but not mandatory. 126 grams for two bottle cages. Lightweight bottle cages are around 30 to 40 grams each. Going with the chain and some mounting bolts for the bottle cage is 270 grams. You don't save too much weight here. I think a lightweight chains are still about 230 grams depending on how many links there are. Here's two brake cables, two derailleur cables. Actually, there is a little bit of cardboard, so it's going to be a few grams lighter than this. Housing for the front derailleurs, rear derailleur, and brake housing, 309 grams. Can't forget our bar tape. It's probably less than 116 grams because I have it in the box right now. That includes end caps. Can't forget about the wheels. The front is 1.3 kilograms with the tire and tube. The Vision rear wheel is 1.465 kilograms. I have a few options here, so let's try another wheel. The Mavic Axiom Equip is 1,400 grams with a skewer also. And the Velocity A23 with a tire and skewer comes in at 1,280 grams, so I might be using this one. So I have a brief look at the weights here, and using the rear LX derailleur, 
and the A23 rear wheel, my total comes out to 9.4 kilograms or about 20.7 pounds. That's not too bad for a entry level road bike. Now for the even more fun part, I get to start putting the bike together. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is get the fork and put the headset on. The headset is integrated, so I don't need a headset press. I could just put the headset over the front fork and then put the fork tube into the head tube here and then get started on the build. So let's get right to that. Here's a look at the lower portion of the headset. And it actually goes this side, faces upward. This is the top part of the headset. It goes on the top part of the frame and faces downward. So this part right here faces towards the frame. And on this one, the curved part here faces upward. And this bottom part sits flush on the fork. So taking this lower bearing for the headset and make sure this angled part here, hopefully you can see it how it's kind of angled right here. This faces towards the top of the fork and just go ahead and slide that right in like that. And then after that, you're gonna put this into the frame. So with that installed, go ahead and get the fork and put it into the frame. And again, this bottom part, the orientation is quite critical. Then the top, go ahead and slide that over the top, put that in and then slowly press this other section on the frame. And it should, it presses into the bottom bracket, expands a little and therefore kind of stays in place a little bit. Another look at the top. This one is not a sealed bearing, as you can tell. You can see the bearings there. And then the top portion here, this fits on a little tighter. And when you slide it down, you can push this portion in and it stays in quite well. So let's go ahead and add the top cap for that headset on, and then add some of the spacers on. Cause I'd like to add the stem on now start putting that together. So there's some spacers and you always want to save one space or a small one at the end. So you put that on, go ahead, put the stem on. I guess I'll point the top and see how there's a little bit of space here. Let me get a close up. You can tell the silver part is the fork steer tube and a little bit is still showing. So you want to put another top part over it. And then finally from there, you could take your top cap, put it over, and if your star nut is already installed or your expansion tube inside, go ahead and screw this portion in. And a four millimeter here would do the trick to go ahead and tighten that on. After you tighten that down, go ahead and tighten both bolts on the stem evenly. Go to the top one, tighten that, and then go back to the bottom one and tighten that, not super tight because this requires only six Newton meters and we could go back later with a torque wrench to check the torque. This is the seat collar here and you can see that there's a lip right there on the further edge, closer it's smooth so you know this lip part, it's the top area. So go ahead and put this top area like this over onto the seat. And because of the top lip, go ahead and push it down in place. Next, let's go ahead and install the crank set. So make sure it's on the right side and go ahead and Push it all the way through and then go to the left side and install the other end. On this end, you just want to make sure that the crank arm is opposite of the other side. And there we go. And just put that on. After that, you have this end cap here and you want to screw that in. And it does take a special tool to remove it or to tighten that. And the one I use here is the Part Tool BBT9. And you could put that inside and tighten the left crank arm onto the bottom bracket. Let me get you a closer look there. So this is the threads that use a separate tool here. And go ahead, slide it in there and tighten Tighten that in. Next is the five millimeter Allen keys. Shimano does state that these need to be torqued to 12 to 14 Newton meters with a torque wrench. So I tighten that lightly and then go to the other side, tighten this one lightly, 
then I'm going to go ahead and go back and forth. So I'll go ahead, give it another snug turn, and then go back and forth until they evenly get tightened. So you don't want to make one side tight first because you want to make sure that this area here is straight and it's not skewed. The thing to install for me is these brakes. And as you can see, the longer one here is for the front and the one over here is for the rear. So this is the front fork and to install it, it's pretty straightforward. Go ahead and insert the front brake here. And then on the other side with your bolt, go ahead and find that and go ahead and start tightening it in. You may want to use an Allen wrench also to start tightening it in. So while I hold this, I could put my five millimeter Allen wrench in and start tightening the bolt for the front, front brake in. It doesn't have to be precise at this time. It takes a lot of turns to get it a little snug in there. As you can see, I'm spinning it quite a bit. And here, as you can see, it's not straight. So you could straighten it out a little if you want to, but we could always do more adjustments later. So it doesn't need to be super tight at the moment. Just make it a little snug. Also, you could tell that this brake's probably a little higher than that brake. So I need to adjust the brake pads too in a little bit after I get the front wheel installed, but that's much later. Moving on to the rear, you can see that this area right here is much more narrow than the front. Also, another thing to note while you install these brakes is that there are these little washers here. They need to stay on the same side as the brake caliper. The only thing on the other side is just the end cap. So I go ahead and slide the... I hold on to this so the washers don't come off. I'm going to look underneath and start tightening the rear brake on. And once you get a few turns in, you could go ahead and let it go. And this might move a little bit. And then finally go ahead and again get it a little more snug by tightening the rear brake onto the frame and this is a five millimeter allen wrench and again see it's a little loose now but i could go ahead and give it a little bit more of a snug and now you see it's not moving so i'm just putting the bike here on my bike rack if you don't have your own stand that might work as well you could use a bike rack you could use a trainer if you want so whatever you like now we can go ahead and install the handlebar. There are four millimeter Allen bolts here that you can go ahead and remove from the face plate of the stem here. And after you remove these, you go ahead and put the handlebar in. Doesn't have to be perfectly centered at this time. And then go ahead and screw in the handlebar bolts. These are the four millimeters and I'll show you what it looks like. So it's pretty simple. You have the four millimeter and note that they go in and make sure the washer is between the bolt and the stem and you go ahead and screw that in. Also, you can go ahead and line this up. So see it's a little offline and you want these white lines to have a little bit of space. And it's not too critical to get the angle right now because we could always change that and do some final touches later for fitting the bike. And go, these should be about five Newton meters. This says six Newton meters on the stem. However, five should be plenty. All right, now let's go ahead and put the shifters on. And for the shifters, you have to slide this ring through the handlebar from the bottom. And then when you pull this back, you'll see hopefully in here, it's gonna be hard to see that there is a bolt right there. That's a five millimeter bolt and that tightens this STI shift lever from here, clamps down here and pulls it inward and tightens it onto the handlebar. So go ahead and make sure you know which one's right and left. If there's the black lever facing this way that you could push then this is the right shifter. So I could pull this back, the rubber housing, and then if it's on a little too tight, you're gonna have to push this in and go ahead and 
loosen with the five millimeter under here to get an easier fit. When it's quite loose on, you should be able to easily just slide the bar, slide it up the bar, put the rubber grommet over, and then with the five millimeter, go ahead and tighten down the STI shifter, shift brake lever in place. And you might want it a little more parallel, so I have to loosen this and move it up just a little bit for the time being. So as you can see, I loosen it here and then I can move it up until it seems to be about horizontal with the handlebar. Then go ahead and straighten this part out and look to the front and tighten it with your five millimeter and then that side should be set. With the other side ready to go, you go ahead and slide this portion. If it's again too tight, go ahead and loosen this a little bit. And now, and if you loosen it too much, it'll just pop on out. So I have to put it back in. So slide the other opposite STI lever, in this case it's the left one, and tighten that on. When it's in place, you can go ahead and pull that back and this top part, as you can see, it's kind of loose. Let me get you a close up to show you how to put that part on as well. So here's the top part, and as you can see, there's this little recessed area here, and up on the top, there's this little clip. So you want to pull this, I might need both hands on, and pull it over, and that's how it sits, and it stays closed. So do that on both sides. Installing the braze on front derailleur is a lot easier than actually adjusting it. So you want to go ahead and loosen the five millimeter bolt and go ahead and take that off. This end here lines up with the back side of the brazon mount. And from there you can go ahead, line up the holes and just start screwing it in. We could do the adjustments later, but right now just gonna put the front derailleur on and don't even put it in too tight. The rear derailleur in a similar fashion, just use a five millimeter and go ahead and start tightening it onto the rear derailleur hanger. And the hanger is what attaches the frame to the rear derailleur. And go ahead and tighten that all the way in. So next I'm gonna install the cassette. So take a look at this. If you've never installed a cassette before, if you notice right here, this is a smaller indentation and there's only one place that this lines up with on the free hub of the wheel. So this is actually a 36 tooth mountain cassette. So this largest one here is 36 teeth to help go up some steep hills and the 10 speed mountain bike cassettes are, if they're HG or Shimano, they are compatible with the road free hubs as well. So find on your cassette. So I see this is the narrow spot. It might be a little hard to see there. And then I see the narrow spot over here. Go ahead and line that up and put that in. You're gonna do that for the rest of the cassette. So again, here's the narrow spot and it's still at the same location. Put that in there. And for this cassette, there's no spacers. This is a lower end model cassette and it doesn't have other spacers so that's all you need to do is and then the last one you have to look underneath to see where that small area is and make sure it doesn't spin freely finally we have the lock ring and i like to spin it backwards a few times to make sure it's it seats the thread while i'm pushing down but then I'll spin it forward to tighten it because you don't want to cross thread that. If you cross thread it and strip it, you might need a whole new wheel or free hub. So that's real bad. Don't want that to happen. A little bit of tightness and then you're done. At this point also feel free to put the skewer back in place. So I like to have the skewer tightening area on the left side here. Make sure you don't forget the spring and the end and just give it a few good turns and you should be good until you install it into the bike. So now another fun part comes in. We're gonna talk about housing, cables, 
and routing the cables for the bike. We need the brake cables, we need two derailleur cables, and then the housing that goes along with it. So let me go explain that to you in a little bit, just because this video is for beginners. Okay, let's first look at the housing. Initially, you can't really tell the difference between this left housing and the right housing here. But if you look closely, you may notice that this left housing is four millimeters thick and this right housing is five millimeters thick. And they do have different purposes. The left housing here is a derailleur housing and this is housing for brake cables. The brake cables and derailleur cables are different. But let's talk about this housing first. We'll take a look at the housing here, how there looks like a bunch of wires inside here. This is for derailleur cables. Brake cable housing on the other end is like a smooth pipe or a solid sheet of metal that surrounds and encompass the whole housing. All right, I found an end piece. So this is a better view of brake cable housing. You see how the metal goes all the way through and it's solid one piece. It's four brakes and the outer dimension is five millimeters. And here's another look at derailleur housing. Still might be a little difficult to see, but it looks like a bunch of wires going sh parallel to the length of the cable. And this is for derailleur housing. As you see, cables for shifters are 1.2 millimeters. And it kind of looks like this. So it's 1.2 millimeters thick. Brake cables, on the other hand, tend to be a little thicker. And initially looking at it, it does look like it's a bit woven also. So I'd like to start with installing the brake cable. So go ahead and open this up or squeeze on the brake lever and also look inside there. And there's this hole right here. You don't want to pull this out because it's just barely sits in there. You have to line it up with another hole in the back that might be hard to see. Let's see if I could get a better angle and zoom in in there. Well, it might be real hard to see, but way back here is the hole where the cable goes through. So it has to go through here and reroute out to the back right side, and then it'll pop out underneath the hood. Typically two sides to a brake cable, so you want this rounded side for the road brakes. So as you carefully aim it, go ahead and push the cable through the front brake STI housing and just keep some pressure, hold it there as you close it so it doesn't escape. For the end of the housing, you don't need an end cap or a ferrule. Go ahead and hold this here, find the end of the cable, and route that all the way through. Some people like to put some lubricants in there, but I find that that's already good enough. And rather than pushing this inward, pushing the cable inward, hold the end here, and then pull it this way to push into the house housing here. Next, take the end of the cable, and this end has an end cap. Go ahead and route it through the front brake. And if, while you're at it, I guess you should also loosen this bolt here. Pull it out, and I'll show you what I'm doing when I put this cable through here for the front brake cable. And now the front brake cable is routed. As I routed the cable through with my other hand, I was making sure that this cable went between or was sandwiched right here between the bolt and the two plates here. And you can go ahead, pull down. And if you'd like to use your four or five millimeter, it looks like a five millimeter. Go ahead, and put your Allen key in there and start to tighten it up a little bit. Oops, I'm not actually British. The right one goes to the rear, not the fr not the front. In UK, I think the right shifter brake lever goes to the front brake. So I'm gonna route this American way and use my left brake lever on the other side and route it into the brake lever, into the front brake. So routing the rear cable, it depends on your bicycle frame. So there's a housing all built into the frame here. But look, if I use the end caps or the ferrules here, it doesn't fit. So this frame is actually meant to be used without the end caps. So it fits in just fine like that. 
However, for the derailleur cable, I'm going to need to use these end caps. They fit just fine and they're meant to fit in there. I've taken a one inch by half inch electrical tape that's red, that size, cut it and put it around, wrapped it around the end to make a slightly tighter fit. So now I could go ahead, put this in and slide it in and the rubber from the electrical tape kind of holds it in place just a little better. So we've got to measure the brake housing from the frame to the rear brake caliper. And you want this to go all the way to the end because the end cap doesn't give any extra space. So I'm going to cut it just about there. So you go ahead and hold your hand at this area, kind of mark it and just see that it's going to be right about here. And then go ahead with your cable cutters and cut it right there. So if you take a look at the end here, it's not a perfect cut. And you can see that there is just a little hole right there. And so I could go ahead and take a nail and put it in and twist a little bit to make this hole quite a bit bigger. Also, as you can tell, the cut wasn't perfect, so it's a little frayed. So I do have a file that I could use to trim back on these edges there. So go ahead and I have just a regular file and file them at the edges here and just go work your way around at different angles and spend a moment if you like just smoothing it out. And you could do the same with the other side. Just go ahead and file this side as well to make sure it's nice and smooth and has a flat entry point into both ends of the frame. After it's filed, you can see that it's a lot more smooth here and the other side filed down also is quite a bit more smooth. So now I went ahead and put that inch of tape by half inch of tape in here. And also on the other end here, I could go ahead and add the ferrule, the brake ferrule over and it's going to go in just like this. So go ahead and wire the brake cable through and push it through the other end. Put this in here and then you want to route the brake cable in through the brake. Probably easier if I'm looking in from the top view. And now the rear brake cable is almost attached. For this section, make sure you route it between these two plates here. There's a it's maybe a little hard to see. There's two plates and it gets pinched and it's on the inside. And then go ahead and use a five millimeter to go ahead and tighten up the rear brake cable. It doesn't need to be super tight right now. Again, at the end, we have to check all the torques of the bolts and tighten everything down. For this next part, we're going to be installing the shifter cables. And one thing to note here is that you're going to need six of these little ferrules okay so we need one here one here that's two on the frame three four and then for the rear derailleur that one that goes into the rear derailleur and then another one that goes into the housing or into this stud built into the frame here so that's make sure you have six of these you need two shift cables you need housing in the front two housings for the front and another housing for the rear like we did for the rear brake cable, but for the rear derailleur. Before routing the cables in, you wanna make sure there's no tension and that it's in the highest gear, the smallest sprockets in both the front and rear. And then it, the cable should line up. There should be a hole in there. Maybe a little difficult to see, but there's a hole right up here that lines up so you could go ahead and stick and feed the cable through. So as you line it up go ahead and feed the cable through and then pull it through the other side until it lines up and it should fall right in place if not you have to push it down push it down and then pull and now that's in place
This is the last generation of the Shimano with the externally routed derailleur cables. The new cables all go through and underneath and curve along the handlebar. So you're going to want to measure the housing out and it goes on to the left side here. And you want to make sure that you make it long enough so that when you turn it, there are still going to be a little bit of slack. So if it's too short like this, when you turn it, it binds right here in the front. So that's too short. So I'm going to make it a little longer and then go ahead and measure it out. Hold my fingers there and then make the cut. After that's cut, make sure to go ahead and file the edges like I already did and go ahead and put the ferrule on, route that through first. And then you're going to put the cable on and put it through. Have that follow the housing. And then after you put all of this together and on, go ahead and attach it to the brake shifter lever. For my housing, I ended up using electrical red tape because this is actually five millimeter derailleur housing and not four millimeter, so my ferrules wouldn't fit. The next thing is to route this under the bike through the cable guides. Here's the underside of the bike. And from the cable housing up top, you're gonna route it down and through this guide right here. And then it'll go towards the front derailleur. No ferrules are needed here. So this part as you can see is fairly straightforward. This one's for the front derailleur because it wraps to the towards the top of the bike. And the other one here is for the rear derailleur since it extends along the chainstay back to the rear derailleur. So now we just pull the cable through, as you can see here, wrap it around the top of the front derailleur, as seen here, and then go ahead and tighten it to get the front derailleur cable installed. I'm not going to cut it just yet. And now the front derailleur cable is attached. And the same goes for the rear here. Go ahead and make sure this is on the lowest gear. And then find the cable entry and put the cable through. And push it down to make sure it's seated in place. And now the cable's installed. Go ahead and put the housing on as well. Now for the rear cable, make sure it goes through the other end and how's that through also note that look at these cables the derailleur cables they run parallel if any time they crisscross then you've got something installed up front wrong so go ahead and put that through and hang it out towards the back and then I'll flip the bike over now we need to determine the length of the housing for the rear derailleur and a lot of times the rear derailleur would be somewhere around this position so initially when you install the derailleur it's up so don't think you could just make a short one like this and say, oh, it's going to fit because when it pulls down, you see how that extra, there's extra space between here and here. It's not going to fit. So you want to rotate the derailleur until where you think it's going to be. Add enough cable to where it can safely reach all lengths of the rear derailleur. So I'm going to push this all the way up in its furthest direction and give it a little bit of slack like this. Hold my hand here. Notice there's already the ferrule I put in so it stays in place. And then I'm gonna cut the cable about here so we have a nice bend. And then when it's released or when it's at its lowest, highest angle, it'll still fit on all the angles. So this looks like to be about a great wrap. You could probably do a little less like this if you'd like to also as well. Now we can install the ferrule first onto the cable and if you want to slide it in you can. If not, just leave it there. Install the cable onto the ferrule. Insert that and the next cap that I have waiting you could put that in and it might take a moment to fish this through. To get the cable and ferrules through, go ahead and bend the end of the cable and insert that into the rear derailleur. Loosen up the cable bolt and then you can go ahead and this looks like a 5mm as well and tighten that in too.
All right, to summarize the shifting installation, we have the right, which is the rear, comes around and it stays on the right side of the bike, the drivetrain side of the bike. It goes underneath and routes to the rear derailleur. The left side, as you're sitting on top of the bike, goes and routes, connects to the left side, goes underneath, make sure that these lines here do not cross, routes under the frame to the front derailleur. The derailleur housing I'm using is five millimeter thick. However, most derailleur cables four millimeter thick where the ferrules fit. The ferrules don't fit because they're five millimeters. Then go ahead and use some electrical tape if you like. I don't think it's recommended by any bicycle manufacturer, but I've been doing this for a long time and it's been working quite well for me. Next, we have to install the chain, but in order to install the chain, we need to make sure we have the proper length of chain so you can't do that without the rear wheel and the cassette to measure the width of how long or the length of the chain i'm going to go ahead and install the rear wheel it's a lot easier to install without the chain and after this uh, we'll go and measure out the length of the chain the next thing i need to do is size the chain and i'm going to use the big big method so i go to the big chain ring up the front and i'm going to go ahead and Put the chain on the big ring, big cassette, largest cassette. And make sure it goes all the way around and you're attached here all the way around in the big and it goes all the way to the bottom. Then what we're going to do is line these up. So where you line it up here, you have to go and add two chain, two links. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here one and two so i might have to add some more chain to this so as you can see this cassette was not meant for the 36. if i line it up right here it'll fit with a little bit of slack but i cannot line it up to this other one it won't it won't fit this link right here and because of that i'm going to add two links to here so i need to add two links then I'll use this connector link, the missing link, KMC missing link, after I add the two links and connect the chain together. So I have a spare Shimano Ultegra 6600 chain, and there's one link here, and there's another link there, and I need to cut it so that it ends with this, the smaller portion out, or lengthen it. So right here, I'll go ahead and use the chain tool, and the chain tool in here and then go ahead and tighten this or start turning the chain tool to move the rivet out and you have to also make sure that this rivet is lined up with the pin so line it up and tighten this and you can tighten it all the way through and after you push it all the way through, then the chain should be smaller. So take that out. Go ahead and do this. And now you have your extra few links. To insert these KMC missing links, I put one end on this side of the chain, and I have one inserted here. Then you go ahead and line the two up push in and pull out and there you go that's all there is to it go ahead and do that again after you link to the other section and you should have the chain installed of course you want to shift to the lowest gear get this chain off of here you have, or you even put it underneath then you want to move this all the way down to the lowest gear if you want to go ahead and remove a little coat hanger could be a great time to do that put this on the smallest gear and then route the chain through the rear derailleur and make sure also at the same time it's routed through the front derailleur you don't want to do all of this just to realize that it's not on the front derailleur either and make sure it wraps all the way around and through And after you get this routed out and through, 
be good to install the chain. So to put the last area of the chain on, even though you're in the small ring and the smallest tooth, notice it doesn't really stretch out to go that far. So I have this homemade coat hanger that I bent and then pull this all the way to the rear. And then after that, go ahead and pull this, give it some slack and attach it somewhere midway through the chain. And now you have plenty of slack to work with your chain and to add more to your, add the extra missing link right here. All right, here's a close up of installing the KMC missing link. That's what this is called. And you have to make sure you use the 10 speed with the 10 speed chains. And if you have 11 speed, make sure you use that one as well. So I put one on each, each side like this. Then I line the holes up on the inside, push it down and then pull it apart. And if they don't pull apart real easily, there's a tool to do that. I have some pliers here. They're specifically made for chain, chain pliers and pull them apart like that. And now it's secure. Now I'm going to start adjusting the rear derailleur here. I want to make sure that the rear derailleur is snugly. Okay. Now it's on pretty snug. And the first thing I want to do is adjust the lower limit screw. So this is actually called the high limit screw, but it is for the smallest or smallest chain ring, which is the lowest on the cassette. So take a look at the pulley on the derailleur right here, and it doesn't line up with the 11th, sorry, the 10th gear. This is a 10 speed. So you want to use this high and turn it until, tighten it to the right until it lines up directly underneath. So I think we're just about there. Next, check to make sure the cable is slightly firm, and then go ahead and tighten the cable onto the rear derailleur. I like to put my hand behind here because if you don't, see when you try to tighten it, it just moves down. So go ahead and get it nice and snug. You can also double check the derailleur is snug onto the frame if you like. Now I'm going to start turning the crank set and click to see if it works and it shifts up once and it looks like it needs to be a little tighter. It's just a little tighter. You could go ahead and turn this so that it pulls this bolt here out just a little bit and that'll tighten the cable as well. After you get all the way up to the top gear and it shifts, so what I did was I shifted one by one. So for example, I came here and I shifted up once and make sure it went into place. I shifted up one more time and make sure it's not skipping or jumping. And I shift up to the big gear. And now take a look at the bottom here to see if it's jumping. And if it has a slight hop, then you may have to adjust the B screw here which pushes it back. And when it pushes it back, it pushes it away from the cassette. So I'm gonna turn this just a little bit. Can I see just a, maybe a tiny hop and it is quite close here. So let me give it a quick little turn here to pull it a little further back and it'll push the derailleur further away from the cassette. If you're unable to tighten the B screw, then another alternative way to do it is to go ahead and loosen the front the rear derailleur here. So I'm going to loosen it quite a bit and then now I can, now it's a little looser on there. Now I can manually pull this and then tighten it with my other hand. And after you tighten it, make sure you adjust the rear derailleur and put it right back on and tighten it on to the frame. Now that I've tightened that B-screw a little bit, you notice the rear derailleur outer and inner plates here on the jockey wheels, they aren't bouncing up and down much. They're pretty steady in first gear, so that's the way you want it. Next, let's adjust the front derailleur. Now the front derailleur should be a few millimeters above the chain, and also you want to pay attention to the direction, because which way it's mounted. So let's get, show you that. Shift up to the first gear here, which is the largest one. 
bigger end, the biggest gear in the rear, take a look at the front to see if the chain ring rubs. And if it rubs a little bit here, then you're gonna have to adjust this in and out. So you're gonna loosen this cable and then you could rotate this left and right just a tiny bit forward and back in order to have about a millimeter of space. So from the looks of this, it looks like first gear just barely clears, which is ideal. Now go ahead and use your left shifter, spin the crank and see if it shifts up to the big chain ring. And it looks like it's barely making it there, so that means that the cable needs to be tightened up so it there, gets there a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this and use some pliers and tighten that up. So I've got my pliers here and I put some tape on the end, hold them a little tight and tighten it with your other arm. Go ahead and give it another little snug tightness. Now shift it down one or two in the rear. And I'm going to go ahead and see if it goes up. And it looks like it's a lot easier if one time it goes up. Also, now, what you want to do is push out as far as you can to make sure it doesn't go over on the other side. If it does, then you're going to have to adjust the high limit screw and tighten it in. So right now, as you can, see, as you can tell, I'm trying to push this outside on the opposite way of the chain to see if it'll fall off and it looks like it's not falling off so the lens screw is adjusted properly there. Now I'm in second gear in the rear and I think there's plenty of slack to go but if not just slowly make it back into first to make sure you have enough chain slack. So big big works and then also I could just shift down to the first gear to make sure that big and small works and sure enough this combination works as well. Now you could go ahead and Give it about two centimeters if you like and cut off the excessive cable ends. And then after that, you're gonna also wanna put in the cable ends. And then you could use a special crimper or just some pliers and squeeze them on in place. Just like that. As you can tell this crank hits the excessive cable so if you want to just bend it you could use your fingers and bend it give it a little bend and now it should clear so just a little bend like that should do rear cable here is not too long so I'm just gonna go ahead and add the cable in that part's pretty simple just go ahead put it in get your pliers not too far otherwise you'll cut them and squeeze them on. And now it's on pretty good. Now it's time to tidy up the cable. So I get about six inches to a foot of electrical tape and I cut that to length. And now I'm going to go ahead and hold my cables on the inside. I'm gonna wrap around here. And eventually, we're going to go ahead and tighten the cable in place onto the handlebar. Give it a few good wraps. The bar tape will add extra measures of tightness also, but we're going to do that here and also on the opposite side. I'm going to hold it down, get your electrical tape, and wrap it around. I'm going to add another piece of tape here just for extra reassurance. Just wrap that around, get it slightly tight, and then hold that and wrap another section right here. So now the brake cables are secured to the handlebar. Step one for wrapping bar tape is make sure that the cables, if you have brake cables and derailleur cables, are fastened to the handlebar. Some cables might go on the outside, some might go on the inside. Make sure they're secure with electrical tape or your favorite tape. This next step is optional, but I'm going to do it regardless. I'm going to measure the diameter of this bar, and it looks to be about eight centimeters or approximately three and a quarter inches. So keep that in mind. Keep in mind the bar ends are not installed at this time. 
Let's take a look at the contents of the bar tape. You have the two bar tapes, you got two end caps, and you have these extra pieces that goes underneath, underneath the shifters, and then two pieces of white tape to finish wrapping to the bar up here. Taking a look at the bar tape here, there's an underside where it's sticky, and you're gonna be pulling this part off to get to the sticky, the sticky part right there when you want to put it on securely. So if you remember the eight centimeters that I was talking about earlier, the width of the bar tape, if you want to do this, you can, however, it's kind of optional. I'm gonna measure out about eight centimeters here and mark on the inside up here at the end of the eight centimeters. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut from here diagonally and you're gonna leave about half a centimeter because that you need some overlap when you wrap the bar tape. Make sure you're measuring on the inside of the bar tape. You really don't wanna make mess it up. So you could go ahead and this is the end right here. Go up there and if you'd like to mark this up here as well. Now use a ruler if you'd like. I just have my file from sitting around. And if you wanna just mark where you're gonna cut it and this is the area you're going to cut diagonally. Now go ahead with some scissors. Make sure there's half a centimeter on the bottom here. You don't cut it all the way. And cut that at an angle. All the way off. There you have a nice semi-clean cut. This extra part here, don't throw it away yet. I'll show you. You could still use it. It's good. Next up I prefer is just to peel the hoods back to expose the bar even more because we're going to be wrapping so you want this to be exposed so we could wrap around here. Remember this extra piece they gave us? Well it goes around this clamp here and if it's too long if it goes all the way around and it won't fit go ahead and trim off a little bit. It doesn't have to be precise if you trim off just a little bit too much you could always have the hoods cover it so it's not too bad if you cut a little too much off. Next for the sticky part you want to peel back and expose the sticky part here and try to line this up in the middle if you like and go ahead and fix it to the bar. So push it and try to squeeze it and have that sticky area. Hold on to the bar there. Now I like to use electrical tape for this part and I line it up with the edge here and I start this at the bottom. So I'm going to wrap around from the bottom, put that right, line it up, put the tape in nice and snug, line it up on the bottom and you can begin wrapping. And, and when you start wrapping you're going to slowly peel this back. So I'm going to go ahead and Peel the sticky part back and slowly wrap around. And once it's on, you can even cut a little bit of this tape off. So I'm going to get my scissors, cut this excessive part off. There we go. And then I'm going to wrap. And we got the overlap starting on the bottom. So remember on the bottom is where I started it. And that's when you want to give it about a half centimeter. So pull it tight. And you got the half centimeter overlap. And you can go ahead and start wrapping the tape. And when you get further along, keep unraveling the sticky part and still aim for that half centimeter. Remember this is the sticky part. The sticky part here you want it to be touching the bar. Here's a closer look. Sticky parts right here and it touches the bar so you don't want to have too much overlap where the sticky part doesn't touch the bar. And continue with your half centimeter overlap and I'm just gauging it just following a, a line in my mind to go around 
and, and I'm using both hands, so one hand's holding it, pulling it tight, and then I transfer it over to the other hand, and I'm looking again to make sure the sticky part is touching the bar, and using my hands to tighten it as I wrap around. And we're gonna slowly get up to the bar here, and then we're gonna have to go around this bar because it's in the way a little bit. So let me show you what to do when we get to this bar here. Now that we've made it here, I'm gonna back it off a few times because I stopped to just keep the tension on. And as we get closer, again, start removing the backing of the tape. It looks like I could go one more time around here at least. And my hands, as you can see, they'll be like right here. So, and I'll put them up here sometimes. And let's see, go one more. And if you want to have one more, I guess we could go one more here to wrap over. And now it's not really a tricky part, but you just want to, from here, wrap it around the top. So you just go here, wrap over the top, and make sure as this, the sticky part still gets to the bar. And we pull the wrapper all the way through and continue wrapping your bar tape. Again, giving it a half centimeter or so. Nice, keeping tension on. And also removing the backing as I wrap around. If you stop any time, you could back it off just a few times just to go back and get some more tension on the bar tape. You don't want a too much tension because it is just cork or cork based tape wrap and it'll just snap or break. You certainly don't want to do that with your brand new bar tape. And this part, you may have to wrap more than a quarter inch, or sorry, more, yeah, more than a quarter inch or half centimeter because of the bend here. So you may have to wrap it just a little bit more to count for the change. And same with this area, wrap a little bit more because of the bend. And then once we get to the more flat areas, we go back to the quarter inch to half a centimeter wrap. And then if there's a little loose here, like this section, make sure you just pull it in nice and tight to count for that. So with this type of wrap and these 42 centimeter bars, I have a little extra, gonna have a little bit extra. And as we get closer, I wanna make sure that my electrical tape is covered. And if I think just about here, I'm about done, then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make another trim. I think I'm gonna finish here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it there and then cut this at an angle. Let's go ahead and cut this off. And then I'm gonna trim this at a little angle. This is not entirely critical. And continue the angle all the way down. Now, if you'd like to, you could use, and that angle makes it so it's parallel or perpendicular. So go all around. Now you could use some electrical tape if you like initially. Right now I'm just gonna use some black electrical tape. And make sure if you wanna back it off a little bit to make sure it's nice and tight, you could do that while the tape's on. And I leave some bar space for computer mounts or lights, etc. And with the electrical tape, go ahead and tighten that. A little part of the tape here is touching the bar. 
And now that that's installed, see there's still tape and other stuff here, but when you put the hoods back on, it covers it. So looking from the side, you can't tell that there's tape or anything underneath the hood. Looks pretty nice. Also on the bar end side, it's hardly noticeable this very small amounts of tape right here. Now you remember this, it came with the uh, bar tape. Go ahead, it's just some white tape that matches the bar tape color. And go ahead and remove that, peel it back. And go in the same direction, which was this way. You'd cover up your black electrical tape if you like. And wrap that all the way around. Make it a little more smooth transition there. You remember this cut that we made? Actually, we have two cuts. You could still use it depending on the bar and plug. So there's two types of plugs here. This is the one from SRAM, and this is a stock one made from Giant. I've had these bar ends fall out in the past if they're a little bit loose. So that's why I have this piece here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little bit off and then wrap it around here and then shove it in with this in. And the cork is kind of a little squishy, so it adds a little bit of extra holding power. So I went ahead and attached that end cut a little bit of onto the bar end. Might add a little, little bit of weight, but then go ahead and push this in. And there we go. Once you push it in, then you could either pull this part a little bit and trim it off with some scissors, or if you wanna pull it out, as you can see, it's sitting pretty good. You could redo it and put it back in again. So I went ahead and shoved it in again, and see, I can even move the bar holding onto this lead shear, and it's in there fairly snug. The next side, we're gonna do the same thing. Go ahead and peel the hood back. Now we get the pre-cut piece. Go ahead and apply that over the hood. If you wanna pull it a little bit tight and hold on. Push it in real good to make sure it sticks there. Now I made the cut that's half a centimeter from here to eight centimeters there and I applied some electrical tape here and slowly peel back. Now start on the bottom. You can use your electrical tape and line up this base right here all the way and we're gonna be going the opposite way. We're going to be going this way on the right side. The left side we were wrapping the opposite direction. And go ahead and wrap this around and for extra getting a little extra sticky area. I've used the electrical tape and make sure you can feel here where it's at. And you're gonna wrap around. And, and again, making sure that the center portion is approximately sticky and it's onto the metal portion or carbon if you have carbon fiber handlebars and using both hands I'm holding onto the bar tape to keep the tension on it and then when we get a little further we start pulling back on the sticky portion keep that nice and tension and I'm not sure how many pounds I'm pulling, but not too many. I don't want it to break. And that part comes loose a little bit. So we do one more wrap up here. And then transition over to go to the top. And notice with the other hand, I'm still holding on to keep the tension. And that's kind of what you like to do. Just keep the tension here, the sticky portion in the middle, have it come onto the handlebar if it's okay to do. 
and then just continue wrapping. And if any time this, all of this gets too long, especially this portion, you could just use your scissors, reach down, grab your scissors, and cut off the excessive part there. Similar to the other side, when we get to this bend, we may have to do a little more than a half centimeter wrap. And the wrap is all pretty much personal preference. It depends on how soft you want your bars. If you like a little bigger grip, you could do like a centimeter, see how it's wrapped more. But I like to continue consistency and keep my about half centimeter if I can around the entire handlebar. If you do too much, you see that you'll get come up with a little bend here, so you don't want to do that. We'll pull some more off, and we just continue this process, keeping the tension and slowly wrapping around the bar. And notice at this time we didn't, all we did is cut at the bottom here. We haven't had to cut anything yet here. So because you're wrapping diagonally, that should be good enough. And we're coming to the end of where we need to wrap our bar. So I do go a little bit further, make sure all that tape from holding the cables down is done. And now this is, since we're at an angle this way, you want to cut cut it off and then cut at an angle over here. And if you let go at any time, then unravel a few times to get that tension back on and rewrap that portion that was a little too loose. And then we come back to the end here and you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to do this much because you're going to need, you might need some area for your computer or if you have some other things like a light that you want to attach. So I'll back it off a little bit and right here is where you cut it and then you're going to cut it at an angle again. You want to hold the tension, do a little cut and then at an angle trim the excessive on an angle. It's a little easier without the camera in my way, but there we go. That should be done. And then if you want to make it nice and tight again, go ahead and choose to do so. And I'll put a little bit of tape here. Put the tape on here, wrap this down and around. You know, this could be initially to hold it. You could always move it over a little bit. Then we're gonna get the other piece of tape that came with the bar tape. And here's the tape that came with the bar tape. Go ahead and take that out. And if you wanna continue in the same direction, Wrap that out and around. Also, you could use white electrical tape if you wish. If you choose to do that instead. And there you go. On the side here, don't forget to just put your hoods back. And there it is. The look of the new bar tape. And I put in the rear right bar plug end. So it's pretty easy to put on bar tape. Something anyone can do at home. Only requires some scissors basically and that's it. So now we've got the panels, the seat post, the seat to adjust the brakes and the front wheel. We're getting there. To install the pedals I'm just going to use a little bit of this anti-seize lubricant. Now it's not really recommended. I haven't read anywhere that says use this. I do have Shimano grease also. So if you don't have some anti-seize, you could go ahead and use Shimano grease if you like. I like this anti-seize because it comes with a little brush and I don't have to get my fingers 
that dirty. So I can just go ahead and put a little bit on. And the other side, put a little bit on there as well. And then it's ready to install the pedals. To install the pedals, to tighten them onto the bike, it's the same direction as the wheels as you rotate forward. So it's going to be so, it looks like since I'm turning counterclockwise, it's the opposite of the normal threading. But this is the way that it is for the bicycle. This big 15 millimeter pedal wrench, so I could go here and give it another, tighten it just a little bit. Okay. And it'll install the pedal on the drive side. Turn it the same direction as the wheels rotate, so they rotate this way forward as you're riding on. And that's the way to tighten the pedals onto the crank set. Then go ahead and use your 15 millimeter and tighten that as well. So it says 15 millimeter, and that's the distance between here and here. Next, just go ahead and slide the front wheel in. The it might be a little easier if you install it while it's on the ground, on the floor. And then now we can go adjust the brakes. Taking a look at the brakes here, you notice they're just way too loose. Also, we want to take a look at where the brake touches the rim to make sure it's centered. So it looks like it's still loose and barely touching. So I'm going to have to loosen up the bolt over here and tighten the cable. Five millimeter, go ahead and loosen this. So the cable is loose. Now we can use some pliers and pull down on the cable, make it a little more tight. Then we could use this to close it and see if it's a little more tight now. If not, and you need to make little adjustments, then you could always unscrew this here to tighten up the cable even more. If it's still not good, then I pinch with my hand, the brakes a little bit, and then I'll go ahead and tighten it. And now it should be quite a bit tighter. You can see now, it's actually quite tight. It doesn't even go that far. Before I was going all the way to the bar. Now I spin the wheel a little bit and check the alignment, make sure nothing's rubbing and it seems to be doing pretty good. No rubs there. If there is rubbing, you could use your five millimeter, loosen this here, then go ahead and move the brakes left or right to adjust it and hold it in place as you re-tighten it. Here's also a little loose, so I'm gonna use my five millimeter, loosen this, pull it down squeeze this here the brakes closed tighten it down and you see now it's stuck because I tightened it too much and also on this side you may be able to tell that it's not binding or rubbing so that might just indicate that I need to adjust the bolt in the back here go ahead and loosen this bolt back here and then adjust the brakes accordingly and hold it in place while you retighten this. And hopefully it'll start working and not rub. Now the seat pump should be pretty straightforward. These are four millimeter. Just go slide it in and use your four millimeter bolts and tighten them in. And for this seat post, you're gonna to wanna to tighten both sides because the clamps on both sides for the four millimeters and tighten them evenly back and forth until you reach the desired tightness. Regarding the seat angle and the fore and aft position, there's a bolt. This one has a six millimeter bolt. Typically these lower end seat bolts just have one bolt, five or six millimeter, and that you loosen it. And then you could also adjust the angle. The angle, as you loosen it, rotates up and down with this. So I've loosened it here, and now you can see that if you wanna rotate it back and forth, there we go, it rotates along these, there's little crevices in there. So you could choose the angle and how forward or back you'd like it. So seat angles, kind of a personal preference, but if your bike's on a flat level ground, 
I like my seat slightly pointed downward or it might actually be flat because the rear part's a little higher. So I'll put a level here and I like it kind of when the bubble's kind of on right in the middle of this line. So I'd either like it this or just slightly more lower. Seat boat's an already a setback seat so I can move the seat a little forward to offset the setback as you see it comes back. Now you could get probably a little more comfortable if you sit it back just a little bit and if you put it more forward then it puts more weight on your handlebar and it could be a little less comfortable. However, if you're doing like a time trial position, some people want the seat real far forward because they're way over the front of the bars. All right, let's go install the bottle cages. I have some generic bolts here and they fit the bicycle. All right, putting the bottle cages on should be pretty straightforward. Just line up the bottle cage with the bolts and go ahead and screw it in. Now these are not the standard OEM bolts that came with the bike. These are just some um, generic versions. I've also put some anti-seize on this, but you could use some grease as well. And typically you'll be using a four millimeter Allen wrench. But again, these are non-standard bolts that I'm just gonna put on temporarily. And then I will be switching to the standard bolts. The other thing, if you don't put non-standard, since this is a water bottle cage, if it does get wet and starts to rust, you don't want these rusted in there. So make sure you get some galvanized or some material that doesn't rust. Now the seat tube, there's a little brazon adapter here for the front derailleur, so you need spacers before you can insert that. So here, it's not ideal, but I put these little spacers here and then the screws are here. So this will provide enough space to go around the braze on. So go ahead, put one in and just start screwing it in. And sometimes for these little tight spaces, a multi-tool is better than the regular tool because they're so compact and you could fit them in here to tighten places that are hard to get to with a regular screwdriver. So I think I'm almost done and as I mentioned earlier that I was going to go with the torque wrench and check all of the bolts and the torque. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go up to the stem, check that these are around 5 newton meters which is 44 inch pounds. And I have to go here and make sure that the bolts on the crank set are 12 to 14 newton meters. So with the torque wrench set. Start tightening them evenly and then you're going to tighten them until you hear the click for five newton meters. So when you get there, you hear a little click like that. That clicks and the next one, the last one. And there we go, five newton meters for those, and then I'll check the stem bolts next. Now on a left crank, bolt torque is 12 to 14 newton meters, so that's one, about 106 inch pounds. So go ahead and tighten that until you hear a click. Like that, so that one's done, and then turn it to the other side and tighten this also as well to get the proper torque. There we go. Now that's torqued. The seat post is maximum 45 kilograms per centimeter, so go ahead and get that torqued too. After torquing that down, take a look. So it looks like the front and rear brake cables could now be cut. I'm not going to put that on video because I've cut the other ones and put a little end cap on them. So now this bike is pretty much all built. What I like to do is give this a good final squeeze and make sure the brakes, I want to squeeze harder than I normally would because I'd rather if the brakes were loose, have them fail right here while I'm not even riding the bike. And then give the wheel a spin to make sure that the brakes aren't rubbing again. After I squeeze the brakes real hard, there's no rubbing. And then also, you want to loop the chain, inflate the tires, and then I guess you're ready for a double century if you're up for it, because the bike should be good to go.
Remember from the beginning of the video, my guess was about 20.6 pounds plus the weight of some lubricant and anises and grease. So I'm guessing it'll be slightly under 21 pounds. So let's go check it out. So a complete bike with everything, 9.7 kilograms, ends up being, oh, 20.0 pounds. Well, thank you for watching this bike build video. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. It's absolutely free. And if you found anything helpful in this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up down below. And let me know in the comment sections if you have any questions about this entry level build. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video.